I want to start off this video about Eric Stokes by looking at a table. Let's look at some numbers because there's some very fascinating stats with him in his rookie season. So what we're going to look at here is these are five different stats. Uh, the second column is just what the actual stat itself was, what his number was, and then rank where he ranked among the rest of the league. So PFF grade was 67.1. That was 44th in football. Now PFF rank when it comes to defensive backs definitely will vary year to year but you know I quite frankly uh defensive backs in general just their you know how we evaluate them I think in general can be very fluky Eric Stokes's reception percentage so think about it as when he's targeted how often does he give up a catch he only gave up a catch 51 percent of the time that's fifth best in football last year so that's a great number although part of it might be because of the next column a dot or average depth of target was 44.4 which was 127th out of 129 eligible players so this means that it was the third highest average depth of target so teams targeted him deep down the field a lot but didn't really have a ton of success i don't really know exactly what to make of that but i found it fascinating so i wanted to include that in the video PR or passer rating was, you know, passer rating against, obviously. So when he's targeted, what is the passer rating on those plays? 79.1, which was 28th best in football. And finally, snaps per reception. This is how many snaps on average does it take for you to get a catch? So for example, if you gave up two catches on 20 snaps, then your snap per reception would be 10. His was just 12.5, which is 24th best in football. So when he was out there, he was not giving up catches too frequently. So these numbers out of 129 eligible players who played at least 20% of their team's snaps, these are fringe cornerback one statistics, I would say, and very good cornerback two statistics. And he did that as a rookie, which is, in my opinion, really impressive. Let's go over to the film now and talk about what was also impressive just on tape, I thought. And quite frankly, there's room for him to improve on top of that. We'll start off with this play. It's going to be a zone coverage play. One of the interesting things about Stokes, in my opinion, is I felt like when he got drafted, he was mostly, you know, you draft him to be a man corner. Green Bay does, does everything. Their defense, you know, will very much shift uh, game to game or drive to drive or even play to play very frequently. So you have to be able to do it all. And Stokes still answered the call for the most part. Again, not perfect, but for the most part. This play is kind of a good example of just what allows him to be successful. You see his zone on the field. It's the circle in white. There's a receiver who's going to be running a, uh, a route that's going to start off as a deeper route. So for Stokes, you know, a lot of ways that this can go wrong is if you get burned down the field. Yeah, there are two safeties deep, but the safety lined up on Stokes' side of the field is much closer towards the middle of the field, so outside the numbers could be open here. However, right when this play begins, you're going to see that Stokes is not really too concerned about that. He's not giving too much space underneath, and the reason he can afford to do this is because he runs a 4-2. He has just explosive speed, so he really does not have to worry about getting burned deep and this allows him to in a situation like this it doesn't matter if this is in fact a go route because Stokes will be able to keep up but if it's something underneath now Stokes is in a better position to handle that look at how as this is something underneath when Stokes when the cut is made Stokes is still in good position to be able to make a play there is not a ton of separation now Great throw and great catch, it'll still be a completion, but you can say that with virtually every single play. As you see, Stokes is going to get his hand in there and knock the ball away, because he also, I think, has good ball skills. Yeah, some people have criticized his ability to look at the ball. They want to see him look at the ball more. He definitely plays the man, which is how Georgia teaches it, which is why he does it. You know, he's from, he, you know, out of Georgia is where he was drafted. However, when he does have his head turned around and sees the ball, he does do a good job at deflecting it away. Also, something like this, I think, is a great example of just what Stokes brings to the table and kind of this is what can get Stokes out of trouble. And this is kind of why I harp on speed at the cornerback position so much is because if you're someone like Stokes who has some technical issues, for sure, he will get out of position that time. It always gives him a chance to come back. If you run a four or five and you get out of position, like you're screwed, like you're just, you're going to give up a catch on that play. It's not the case for Stokes. And this is a good example. It's a deep route against man coverage, cover one man blitz. So single safety deep, meaning Stokes is essentially going to be on an island here. And these are really important routes that you need uh, a corner to cover. You know, Packers fans watching this video probably have nightmares at, 
you know, thinking about Kevin King not being able to cover Scotty Miller in the NFC Championship game a couple of years ago. It was that exact same play, and the reason why King wasn't able to do it, he didn't do anything wrong on that play, he just wasn't fast enough. Well, Stokes is fast enough. Watch what happened. Look at this move that the Detroit Lions uh, receiver is going to pull off here to get Stokes out of position a little bit. That's a good move, and now Stokes is behind. If this was a slower corner, this would be the end of the play. It'd be thrown down the field, and it would be a touchdown. But it's not a slower corner. Watch what Stokes then does. As you see, he's able to hang with him to not give up much separation, and when this throw eventually comes to the back shoulder, which was a surprise, Stokes still was able to react and make a play on the football. Again, because he didn't, he wasn't getting burned entirely at that point. Because yes, he got out of position. Yes, he could have maybe done a little, you know, had a little bit better footwork there. But it didn't matter. He knocked the ball away, and that's his job on that one. Like something like this is another good example. It's again going to be a man coverage play. Uh, it's going to receiver for Pittsburgh. It's going to be running an out route. And watch what happens. Right when this play begins, watch how Stokes really I think does a good job of breaking in at the right time. He can wait. Like that's one of the things that just will get you in a good spot is you just wait the one of the big ways that can cause you to get beat is if you have to try to guess early that's how you can get beat on double moves right someone starts to shift one way you crash way in and then it can just run deep and blow by you but for Stokes he kind of has the luxury of he can play a half step behind because he knows he'll make it up so as you see watch how he just hangs with uh, the receiver there and does not give up any separation whatsoever. So again, that's just what he can do. Speed sets things up, but he also does a good job of he knows who he is. He knows his strengths and he plays to his strengths. And that's what allows him to be able to give up very little separation on so many of these plays. Going over here, there are some small issues you will notice with Stokes's game. There just are. This is kind of a good example where it's going to be zone coverage. Uh, I've circled where Stokes is though. It's essentially view it more as a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the receiver he's lined up against that's essentially what it's going to be look at how right when this play begins receiver cuts in and I think Stokes this is kind of one of those things where he can definitely get himself a little bit out of position and I think this is an example of it where it's like he doesn't have to be necessarily be this far in and I think that he'll eventually start to learn hey like you're okay here and again this isn't bad coverage by any means at this point what's gonna be bad is what he's gonna do once the receiver cuts up to the top of the screen as you see Stokes grabs on and it would have been separation and probably a touchdown had he not done that it was a bad play by Eric Stokes it was it's not like him interfering is a big part of his game it's not like he got flagged a lot he actually was good at avoiding penalties throughout the course of his regular season but it's more so kind of more complicated moves sort of double moves can get him out of position a little bit so even though I talked about last play about how he does a pretty good job of playing to his strengths and he, he does but he can still get beat on double moves, uh, which is something he will have to improve upon, uh, you know. But again, rookies make rookie mistakes. I'm not too concerned about it. I figured I'll even put on my Eric Stokes jersey uh, for this one. It is uh, 21, not uh, 12, uh, just to be clear. Uh, but yeah, you know, again, I think I kind of touched on everything, but just a really good rookie season. Uh, this is why you draft fast corners. It tends to work out. So that's what I think of all of this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.